Arapaima are huge, like bigger than me, and I'm 6'2". Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon Ringstad and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we will discover the tropical river water of the Arapaima. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Today we will be looking at a genus rather than a specific species. I had a hard time figuring out the difference between the species. I believe they are based on location instead of physical appearance. The Arapaima or Piruruku are large freshwater bony tongued fish. In fact, they are said to be one of the largest freshwater fishes in the world. Let's discover geographic range and habitat preferences of the Arapaima. Where can we find this fish? They are native to the tropical freshwater basins of South America in the Amazon River Basin, Brazil, Peru, and Guyana. They prefer slow moving water that is low in oxygen. They can live in marshes, bogs, lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams. During the flood season, these fish will venture out into the forests and wander around for several months. Due to illegal release of the fish, in other parts of the world, they can be found in Asia. Don't move and release fish illegally. So how am I going to paint this fish? I want to have subtle colors for most of it. I might even do a grayscale or a monochrome background and let the bright colors of the right bright red stand off the canvas. I use the golden ratio of my canvas to place the arapaima. Now the golden ratio can be calculated or measured. I don't have the tool to measure, so I use math. All you need to do is take the length or height and multiply by 0.618. This gives me the golden ratio of the canvas. I can also measure the golden ratio of that new length and place other details if I need. I work in three stages, blocking in phase, modeling, and detail phase. With the blocking in phase, I use thin strokes with larger brushes to lay down color and shapes. This gives me a feeling for where things are going to be placed. I don't worry too much about getting the colors exact here. I use the modeling phase to adjust these colors, finding my darks and midtones. I use mixing white during this phase to tone down my colors. This helps give a sense of depth. Here, I also add textures to give the painting depth. The final phase is my detail phase. I use small brushes to add tiny details. During this phase, I start using titanium white in my mixing to create vivid colors. I use raw titanium white sparingly for my tiny details and sparkling highlights. I use this formula for all of my paintings. I use paint that work well with multiple layers and add glitter, glass bead gel medium, or pearlescent paint to them at the end to grab real world light. Let's move on to our next segment of the adventure. Physical appearance and behavior. What do these fish look like? Arapaimas can grow to 10 feet long and weigh around 200 pounds. Individuals have been larger, but due to overfishing in the early 1900s, their size has decreased. They have a cylindrical body with their dorsal and anal fin shifted back towards their caudal fin or tail fin. They have a copper green flattened head that is turned up towards the surface. This mouth has a large bony tongue in it, which is why they are in the order Osteoglossiformes. Osteoglossiformes are ray finned fishes with bony tongues. Their body is black and white, or gray in color depending on the location and covered with huge plate scales for protection. These scales are hard on the outside and flexible on the inside. This allows the fish to be maneuverable but still armored. Their tail is beautiful, it is bright red. Now as the arapaima swims, it increases and decreases the size of the scales, increasing and decreasing the red coloration as it moves. Now that is amazing. 
They have a giant round tail for propelling themselves through the water. Sometimes they will even leap out of the water. Now that must be a sight. Imagine a 10 foot animal leaping out of the water. Oh, wait, I guess we see 40 foot whales do it all the time, but these are fish and not whales, so my point still stands. Let's discover some fun behaviors. Since the arapaima live in fresh water that is moving slowly or has tons of plant life in it, or decaying terrestrial plant life in it, the oxygen count gets really low. It can get down to 0.5 parts per million. Now, most fish use gills to respirate and transfer oxygen. In conditions like this, it means that the fish is limited to a certain size or a certain metabolic rate. Most fish will slow down and become sluggish to survive the low oxygen rates. So what do arapaima do? It turns out that they have adapted their gas bladder to become a lung type organ. It can control buoyancy, but it also is lined with thin membranes for oxygen transfer like a lung fish. This fish takes a loud gulp of air and breathes at the surface. They have a huge artery running along their spine. This means you shouldn't pick up an arapaima out of the water. The cell walls are so thin for easier gas exchange that they can burst an organ and killing the fish if they're lifted out of the water. Arapaima breed and mate in the dry season early in the year. The females dig a nest around 40 inches wide and 10 inches deep in the mud or silt. As soon as it is the rainy season, the eggs hatch. There is more nutrients for the juvenile fish to eat and grow. Here's the fun part. The male protects the young. It is not common where the male protects the young. When in danger, the male opens his mouth and the little fish swim inside. He holds them there until the danger is gone. Meanwhile, the female swims circles around the male, protecting him from all sides. Now what a power couple. What do arapaima eat and how are they doing? Arapaima primarily feed on fish species, but will occasionally feed on fruit, seeds, birds, and small mammals living close to the water. They have some teeth, and their bony tongues aid in crushing things. But this is my favorite feeding mechanism in animals. The arapaima's mouth is designed to open quickly. This creates a vacuum inside the mouth, uh, the meowth, wow. <laughs> This creates a vacuum inside of the mouth. Water and prey are rushed into the mouth and BAM! You are swallowed. It happens so quickly that the prey doesn't even have time to react. So how are they doing? Uh, the arapaima, not the prey. The prey is swallowed. <laughs> the IUCN Red List has them listed as data deficient. This data was conducted in 1996 and needs to be updated. It is hard to know exactly where this fish lives. They can live all over and don't have specific site preferences. It would take a huge team of people to do the study. In the early 1900s, this fish was captured almost to the point of extinction. Fishermen would harpoon or net the fish when they surfaced to breathe every 10 to 15 minutes. They have a ton of uses for people. Their scales can be sewn together to create a strong leather, their tongues are used to grind up medicine, and their meat can feed several people and is considered a delicacy. They are also in the aquarium trade. I can see why. They are a glorious fish. They are thought to be 13 million years old and look like it. The problem arises when they are released into non-native bodies of water. They are an apex predator in their habitat and will outcompete local fish. Don't be that person who ruins your local water system just because you can't take care of a monster-sized fish. Let's move to our final segment of the adventure. What was my personal encounter with the arapaima and how is my painting coming along? I was lucky enough to catch the tail end of the monster fish exhibit at the Odyssey in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was there with a friend and we got to see a floor to ceiling exhibit filled with the largest freshwater fish in the world. They were all massive units, big chungus, big birth of fish. When every fish is larger than me and makes me feel small, now that is a feat. 
This arapaima was cruising next to a rocky cliffside. It looked like a black and white filter. The fish had the only color. Copper, green, and brilliant flashes of red in its tail. I had to paint it and share with you. I couldn't believe how big and bold these were. I took a single picture, knowing it would not do the animal justice. That is why I paint them. I can present details and remember details that my camera has trouble portraying. I was in awe. By this point in the painting, I am on my detail phase. I am using small brushes and bringing, on, bringing out my highlights with bold colors. I start using titanium white in my color mixing. It is easy to overdo though, so be careful. Use titanium white sparingly. I can blow out the value very easily. I let my paint stick off the canvas. It adds texture and details while also pulling real world light into my painting. I also add glitter, glass bead gel medium, or pearlescent paints to the final touches. It gives another layer of depth and play with my paintings. I love how it makes it move and play like it is alive. It makes me feel like the warm freshwater river systems of the Amazon basin. The flashes in the moody waters of the Arapaima. There we have it, this painting is finished. What do you think? Now I think it turned out great. I had to add um, another focus point in the front of the painting. So if you saw those rocks pop in at the very end, that was me trying to figure out my composition. And I know that I really like it now. This month I'm gonna be helping the ALS Association. I always do the ALS Association in April because that is that's when one of my friends passed away due to ALS. I know a few people who have had ALS and it's kind of a, not kind of, it is a really bad disease. ALS, it just makes so that your body doesn't function correctly or doesn't function at all. It can be slow and it can fe or it can be fast paced. Uh, and the families that are affected by this disease have a really hard time and I just want to help raise funds so that we can have research or we can help those families who are going through this. Go to als.org slash donate, links are in the description. Did you know that portions of my sales goes towards charity? So when I make a sale in the previous month, that I take a portion of that sale and I donate it in the next month so that I can donate to charity. I try and donate to charity every month. I know it's not very big right now, but any bit helps. And as this community grows, the more impact that I can have for my local community. So I sell my originals. The original that you see here is up for sale. I also sell prints. Now I sell limited and unlimited prints. My, my limited prints are as close to the original as possible with glitter, glass bead gel medium, or pearlescent paint on them to play with light. My unlimited don't have this. Now I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island for my print shop. They have wonderful quality, they're great people, I love working with them, and go ahead and go check them out if you would like as well. Tell them that I sent ya. <laughs> so by supporting this community and this channel, you are supporting two local businesses and charity. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate all of the support. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.